February 1973, and I'm sitting on a bench at the bus depot in downtown East St. Louis. I'm waiting for my brother to pick me up. Just got out of the army and I'm sitting there wondering what the fuck had just happened to me and did I just wake up from a dream. I was in the town I grew up in and it was a few blocks from Main Street, yet it was a whole different world. I felt like I had been abducted and dumped into a forced labor camp and had just escaped after two years. Now, two years before, I was a freshman in college, partying with some studying on the side. I was not worried about the draft. I knew they didn't want me since I did not want any part of the military either. So I felt safe and secure with my deferment. Party on. I slept through my winter quarter and ended up on academic probation. There was no problem. I could attend class, study, and get the grades I needed to get my deferment back. Along comes the spring of 70. Demonstrations. Kent State and protesters being beaten up by cops and construction workers. They shut the school down early due to the riots on campus and in town. Well, since there were no letter grades due to the early closure, I lost my deferment. Turned 19 and won the lottery with number 17 in the draft. I knew I was dead meat. They were sending most of the draftees and new recruits to Vietnam, so I had a pretty good idea where I would be going. I thought about not going. I figured I could get a deferment letter from my doctor due for my bone spurs and missing a part of my anatomy. I realized I could not be able to live with myself or my family if I did not do my part and serve. My grandfather was a medic in World War I and my father flew a hump in Burma during World War II. So after weeks of whining, I reported to the Army in February of 1971. When they asked you in basic where you wanted to go, I told them Vietnam. Hey, why not? They were going to send me anyway. Well, it must have been the right thing to do because instead of Vietnam, I got sent to the post where they trained the wax, women soldiers. I did okay in the Army. I mean, I could read and figure out how to follow orders. More importantly, I knew how to stay under the radar. Do your time and get out. I had a pretty good time playing on the post flag football, softball, and team handball and made some good friends. But I had a horrible job. A clerk typist at headquarters. Not much thinking, just typing and being spit-shined every day. Really important shit. Still, I could not figure out why they needed my ass. After several months of hearing from guys coming back from Vietnam, I realized I did not belong there. I still had a hard time figuring out why we were there and what, if anything, was being accomplished. About two months into my tour, Two Army officers showed up on a post looking for volunteers for a research program that the Army was conducting to develop medicine and treatment for the troops. They offered light duty, two months in Maryland with TDY pay, a chance to get away from, a chance to get away from the awful job I was in, and more importantly, it would almost guarantee that I would not have to go to Vietnam. I got lucky. I was selected for the program. I spent two months being a test subject for various research projects. One of the studies I did was with amyl nitrate. I was hooked up to all kind of monitors and then given a large dose of amyl nitrate through a gas mask. I had an adverse reaction and thought I was dying. I was strapped down with all kind of monitors attached to my body and could not move. You know, I also spent a couple of days in a contained environment after having an IV injection of a hallucinogen during which time I was being tested and evaluated. Like the rest of the Army, a surreal experience. You know, I felt some shame and, and guilt for volunteering for the program since I, it assured me that I would not have to go to the shit show in Vietnam. I did my time and moved on. So, back to the bench and figuring out what to do with my life and the lessons I learned. My takeaways were, one, yeah it can and most likely will happen to you. Number two, no one has your back but you. Number three, never put yourself in a position where others can have control over you. Four, it is easier to operate in a big system, exploit the dysfunctions, and look for the cracks and openings in the margins. And five, stay low. Work hard and keep your head down. So, after working in a glass factory for about a year to save some money, I returned to college. 
I had the GI Bill, a new attitude and desire to get a degree in business and make some serious money. You know, the great American dream. I did well in school, making a dean's list every semester, I'm working part-time and partying a bit. I got my master's in rehab counseling after realizing I belonged in a helping profession. I got lucky again. My first job out of grad school was with a Vietnam vet community-based organization. I then got hired to help put together a vet center team in Portland and got to work with some of the most courageous and caring veterans in the newly developed field of PTSD. Now for the next 40 years, I worked with combat-related PTSD, providing group and individual and family therapy. I also did a little program development and management along with education and some training. For about 38 of those years, I did not consider myself a real veteran. I felt a sense of shame and embarrassment about what I had done and how I had not served honorably. I had ducked out on Vietnam. I got out of the Army in 1973, yet it took almost 40 years to feel like I had recovered from the time I'm in the service and had some pride for having served. Then about six months ago, the VA awarded me a service-connected disability for injuries I, injuries I incurred while in the research program. Last year, I found out the research program was started in the 50s and was an LD50 program. LD50 is a clinical term meaning a lethal dose for 50% of the population. They were looking to weaponize chemical and biological agents, a fact left out of our recruitment and orientation. I had a near-death experience in one of those experiments and some other once-in-a-lifetime experiences. Now I have to adjust to being considered a disabled vet, the label I had just got from the VA. I've always considered a disabled vet as someone who should, be, should, who should be given respect and appreciation for their service. And I looked up to them for, for their sacrifice. A disabled vet was a hero to me. I have a feeling this one's going to take a while to absorb and integrate. But I do not think it will take 40 years this time. Because I was not a combat vet, I did not feel like I had to return home. I never left the States and I felt I was able to skate through two years. What I had realized that I needed to understand and frame my experience so I have a comfortable with what I did and what I accomplished. I've not been looking for a home. I've got one with a wonderful wife and daughter. What I have been looking for is acceptance and peace. I want to not feel like a coward anymore and be at ease with those two years of my life. Oh yeah. Another lesson learned, number six, know what you're getting into when you volunteer.